Hello, wonderful staff of the Northwest Kidney Center, coming to you live from the flagship unit in Kent. Because we are approaching Thanksgiving, I thought it appropriate to begin by thanking all of the wonderful dialysis nurses and technicians out there who have put in a request to transfer to the Kent unit. Uh, we are reviewing your applications and we will get back to you. We still have a few openings, so it's not too late to join the best dialysis team ever assembled. Uh, because this is autumn or fall, I thought it timely to discuss falls among dialysis patients. Falls are really common, particularly among the elderly and those with other medical problems, such as kidney failure. Um, studies show that approximately one quarter of dialysis patients fall every year, meaning that they are about three times more likely to fall in any given year compared to the general population. We know when a patient falls in our dialysis units, but otherwise, falls sometimes go without clinical attention for a variety of reasons. Patients, for example, may never mention uh, the event to a healthcare provider. Uh, there may have been no injury at the time of the fall, and we often forget to ask our patients about falls. Um, significant uh, morbidity and mortality may result from falls, uh, particularly in older people. Falls are the leading cause of injury, uh, both fatal and non-fatal among older adults in the United States. Um, and a number of physical conditions, um, as well as environmental conditions, can predispose to falls and happen to be modifiable. So we'll discuss the importance of routinely asking patients about falls, assessing their fall risk, and addressing uh, modifiable underlying risk factors. This talk has three objectives. Uh, understand the risk of falls, recognize risk factors for falls, and no strategies for preventing falls, particularly among dialysis patients. Let's begin with a discussion of the epidemiology of falls. The incidence of falls increases with age and varies according to lifestyle. Uh, according to a 2018 Behavior Risk Factor Surveillance System study, 27.5% of adults 65 years and older had at least one fall in the last uh, year, and 10% reported a fall-related injury. Um, and the percentage of falls increased to about 34% in those age 85 and older, uh, and falls were more common among women than among men. Um, now, the difference in fall rates according to ethnic background, it's not uh, well studied, but one study suggested that it was uh, more common in whites than in blacks and Hispanics and least common in Asians. Falls commonly result in injuries, usually minor, but can be major. In one study of uh, women over the age of 70 who were followed for two years, 41% of the falls resulted in minor injuries and 6% resulted in what we'd consider to be major injuries, such as dislocations or fractures or lacerations. Um, rates of fall-related injuries are higher for nursing home residents on the order of 10 to 30 percent. Falls account for 62 percent of non-fatal injuries, uh, leading to U.S. ER visits uh, for people that over the age of 65 years. Uh, and approximately 5 percent of falls in older patients will lead to hospitalization. Let's now discuss the morbidity and mortality associated with falls. Fall-related injuries are often associated with significant morbidity. These include decline in functional status, uh, increased likelihood of nursing home placement, greater use of medical services. Um, compared with hospitalizations due to other conditions, hospitalizations from falls resulting in hip fracture or other injuries lead to worse outcomes and a greater chance of nursing home admission. Nearly 95% of hip fractures are caused by falls and among community living older adults who sustain hip fractures, 25 to 75 percent do not recover pre-injury functional status uh, after their fall. Um, there was a study uh, published in 2013. Uh, it was a prospective study of community dwelling adults above the age of 70 who were followed for 14 years. And they found that recovery from a serious fall requiring a hospitalization really was related to their pre-hospitalizational functional status. So rapid recovery was only seen in patients who had almost no problems prior to the fall. Uh, substantial recovery was unlikely in patients who had significant disability prior to the fall, and that would include renal disease requiring dialysis. The morbidity and mortality associated with falls was further highlighted in a study published in 1998 of 1,100 um, 
independent uh, living individuals over the age of 71 who were followed prospectively for three years to evaluate the incidence and the impact of falls. What they found was those who had suffered at least one fall experienced a decline in just basic activities of daily living. Uh, a lot of people would restrict their activity because they didn't want to fall again. 12% uh, of the people who fell uh, had long-term admissions to nursing homes, never returned to independent living. Um, and after adjustment for other risk factors, the risk of nursing home admission increased progressively uh, for those uh, with a single non-injurious fall, uh, two or more non-injurious falls, or at least one fall causing serious injury. So the more times you fell, the more likely you were to become admitted to a nursing home. Complications resulting from falls are the leading cause of death from injury in adults older than age 65 and the fifth leading cause of death in older adults. In a large study of older adults seeking emergency care after a fall, a little over 2% of the injurious falls resulted in death. The estimated cost of fall-related injuries for those above the age of 65 in the United States, at least as of 2015, uh, was $50 billion per year. I mentioned earlier that after a fall, um, people oftentimes restrict their activities because they don't want to fall again. And this is called post-fall anxiety syndrome. It's well established. Uh, it's more common to people who live independently uh, as well as those who have balance and mobility problems in a history of falls. Uh, there was a study looking at over a thousand um, community developing dwelling women uh, ages 70 85 years uh, and the fear of falling was present in about a third of the patients at baseline and at 46 percent after three years of follow-up another study of 673 community dwelling older adults 60 percent of people reported that they they limited their activity uh, and 15 percent severely limited their activity because they were afraid of falling let's now look at the risk factors for falls now, falls in older individuals are most often due to multiple causes. In other words, it's usually a combination of factors that contributes to falls. It can be uh, heart disease, uh, decline in balance or vision, numbness in the feet that we call neuropathy, muscle weakness, uh, can be an unfamiliarity with an environment or uneven ground. Um, so there are multiple individual risk factors that have been identified for falls, and these include a history of a fall, uh, weakness in your muscles, particular legs, older age, female sex, uh, any sort of cognitive impairment, balance problems, the use of medications that can affect your, the clarity of your thinking, like um, antidepressants, psychotropics, uh, things like that, arthritis, a history of stroke, um, a drop in your blood pressure when you stand up called orthostatic hypotension, dizziness, and anemia. And of course, our dialysis patients have uh, many of these risk factors. There are also several risk factors for falls associated with major injuries, uh, again, such as a fracture or a dislocation, um, a laceration, maybe requiring sutures. These include gait and balance impairment. Uh, again, certain medications, particularly those that can affect your blood pressure or the clarity of your thinking. Uh, syncope, so loss of consciousness. Uh, previous fall with injury uh, and so-called decreased executive function uh, that's associated with cognitive impairment. There are different risk factors for falls depending on the location. So for example, indoor falls tend to occur among people who are generally frail, uh, in poor health, have an inactive lifestyle, uh, have some sort of disability, whereas outdoor falls tend to occur in younger, more active people who have um, better than average health and uh, uh, greater physical ability. People who lean forward or are hunched over have poor posture and are more likely to fall down. Similarly, people who have muscle weakness have less strength in their legs to support themselves are more likely to fall. Abnormalities in their sensory system that can relate to their hearing or their feeling. So if they have numbness in their feet, we call that neuropathy. Or maybe they have visual loss, say related to cataracts or glaucoma or macular degeneration or other problems. All of these can contribute towards falls. Previous falls and fractures are risk factors for the same or recurrence of the same. Uh, so if you've fallen before, you're more likely to fall again. If you've had a fracture, if you've broken one hip before, you're likely to fracture another one in the future. Um, there was a Framingham study uh, that looked at 481 uh, people who had sustained one fracture 
and almost 15% had a second hip fracture during a four-year follow-up. Hypertension and vascular disease are risk factors for falls, and of course, these are common problems that we see among dialysis patients. Um, blood pressure control is very important. If we don't regulate their blood pressure properly, uh, particularly if you know, we give them too many medications or if we remove fluid too fast during dialysis, their blood pressure can fall when they stand up. We call that postural hypotension. That can definitely increase the risk of fall. Another study showed an association between cerebrovascular disease and an increased risk of falls. And another study showed that uh, people who have mild to moderate cognitive impairment have a greater risk of falls and hip fractures. And that cognitive impairment is oftentimes due to vascular disease. Several age-related chronic conditions are also associated with an increased fall risk. This includes end-stage renal disease, any sort of neurologic disease such as Parkinson's disease, which is a neurodegenerative uh, disease which affects people's posture uh, and their cognition uh, and the um, sort of rigidity of their muscles. Any chronic musculoskeletal pain can increase the risk of falls, and that risk correlates with pain severity. So the more pain you have, the more likely you are to fall. Um, any sort of osteoarthritis, particularly involving the hip or the knees, more likely to uh, contribute to a fall. Um, chronic pain. A lot of people have uh, chronic pain, and that can you know, distract people's uh, attention. They can get treated with narcotic pain medications, which can affect their cognitive reactions and increase the risk of uh, falling. Of course, diabetes uh, fall rates are higher for older patients with diabetes compared to those who don't have diabetes. Um, and uh, as I mentioned on the previous slide, any, having any sort of cerebrovascular or cardiovascular disease is associated with an increased risk of falling. Medications are also a major risk factor for falls and are also probably the most modifiable risk factors for falls. These include drugs that affect the central nervous system, such as neuroleptics, the sedatives, uh, benzodiazepines, and antidepressants. Additionally, antihypertensives can contribute. Uh, these include vasodilators. Vasodilators are the medications that dilate blood vessels, uh, such as calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, uh, and these can increase your risk of falls. Although in 2021, there was a meta-analysis of randomized trials that didn't find a clear association between just the use of antihypertensive drugs in falls. It was more the vasodilators. Uh, there are many other factors as well. Uh, for example, alcohol use. Now, the relationship between alcohol use and falls appears to depend on the amount of alcohol consumed. Uh, in one study, men with uh, problem drinking had a 59% higher risk of falling than those who did not. Um, footwear intuitively it would contribute to falls. I think most of us can agree that someone who's unsteady on her feet should not wear high heels. Um, although the studies that have looked at this have come up with conflicting results. In general, it's probably a good idea to at least wear low heeled shoes. Lots of environmental factors contribute to falls. In a dialysis unit, you have to worry about ice on the floor or you know, the, the rugs uh, in the uh, entryway. You know, I want to make sure that they're not irregular or something that the patients can trip over. Um, and then finally, institutional settings. I mean, falls in hospitals, dialysis units, nursing homes uh, are much more common uh, and associated with more morbidity than uh, in the community setting. Okay, now let's talk about uh, the evaluation of patients who are at increased risk of falling. If someone falls, it's a good idea to ask uh, the patient where the fall happened, uh, if there were symptoms before, for example, did the patient feel lightheaded, uh, imbalance, was there any loss of consciousness? Uh, it's a good idea to ask the patient about arthritis and pain and uh, difficulty walking um, and to assess them for a possible cognitive impairment uh, or any sort of neurologic disease. And remember that at least half of our patients have diabetes and that's often associated with numbness or neuropathy in the feet uh, and that can contribute to tripping and falls. Very important to re review their medications as both antihypertensives and sedatives can contribute to falls. Um, and then, of course, you know, look for environmental factors that can contribute. This can include lighting or a floor covering or the absence of railings or furniture, other important um, things that may have contributed. On physical exam, it's a good idea to just watch how they walk, uh, look at their posture and their gait, watch them get up from the dialysis chair and walk across the room to the scale. 
Um, of course, we check postural vital signs um, as a screen for orthostatic hypotension, which is particularly important at the end of the run after we have removed fluid. And remember that diabetics uh, commonly have orthostatic hypotension, and that can be exacerbated by fluid removal. Um, it's a good idea to uh, evaluate their hearing and their vision, um, look at their feet for any sort of deformities like a Charcot foot uh, or absence of sensation, and uh, then do a muscle assessment because uh, lower extremity strength is a very important part of our balance. Let's discuss how to prevent falls. So multiple uh, preventative intervention studies have been done in the past, uh, including education programs and interventions to improve strength and balance, uh, say optimized medications, modify environmental risk factors. And some interventions have targeted a single factor while others have attempted to address multiple factors, um, uh, either by personalizing interventions or by you know, intervening on the same set of risk factors in all patients. And in general, evidence suggests that you know, interventions that are individually targeted to a patient are better than just having a standard package of uh, interventions that are applied. Uh, in 2021, there was a network uh, meta-analysis that showed that several single and multiple fall prevention interventions were associated with fewer falls, so it works. Uh, if we can actually implement these, uh, we can help our patients um, reduce their risk of falling. Exercise has been shown to be one of the most consistently positive interventions to reduce the risk of falls, particularly injurious falls. Uh, multiple types of exercises have been shown to be effective, and these include gait and balance training, strength training, uh, movement exercise such as Tai Chi or dance, as well as aerobic exercise. In the largest meta-analysis that evaluated exercise as a single sole intervention in community dwelling older adults, exercise reduced the rate of falls by 23%. It's a good idea to have uh, the nephrologist review their medicines and make sure that they're not taking medications associated with increased fall risk such as psychotropic medications including benzodiazepines, lorazepam, clonazepam, uh, antidepressants, uh, antipsychotics, all of these can contribute to falls. The environment can also be modified in order to reduce the risk of falls. Common interventions include installing uh, handrails on stairs, uh, grab rails in bathrooms, improving the lighting, uh, making sure that, sure that there's nothing that patients can slip on, such as ice on the floor um, or you know rugs or bath mats or something like that at home. Um, there was a cluster randomized trial published in 2015 that showed that a standard set of home safety interventions, such as one that we just discussed, uh, resulted in a 26% decrease in injuries caused by falls over a three-year period. We all know how important education is, uh, but... Uh, educating older patients about fall prevention as a sole intervention has been not been shown to reduce the rate of falls. So you can talk all you want about preventing falls, but you actually have to implement a program or a strategy in order for it to be effective. Uh, clinicians love to prescribe walkers and canes as a way of preventing falls. Interestingly, there's no randomized placebo-controlled trial of assistive devices in preventing falls, although most of us think that it's still a good idea anyway. Briefly, I want to mention something called hip protectors. Um, hip protectors are good for preventing fractures in the setting of a fall, although they don't actually prevent falls. Uh, what they are is a pair of plastic shields that are placed over the hips and held in place by trousers or a belt, uh, such that if a patient falls, uh, the plastic disc that is over the hip uh, absorbs most of the force of the fall, uh, thereby preventing a fracture of the hip. Um, the studies have showed, shown sort of mixed messages in terms of their efficacy, uh, but I think part of that is because, you know, a lot of patients don't like to wear them, uh, make your hips look bigger, but, uh, but I think they are effective at preventing a fracture if a patient does fall. Okay, let's summarize what we've learned. Between 30 and 40% of community dwelling people each year over the age of 65 and 50% of those in long-term care facilities fall each year. Um, major injuries occur in 5% of the falls and in 10% of falls in institutions. Many risk factors 
for falls, and they include a history of a fall, lower extremity weakness, older age, female sex, any sort of cognitive or mental impairment, balance problems, medications that affect uh, your brain, uh, antidepressants, uh, anti-anxiety medications, for example, uh, the presence of arthritis or a prior stroke or blood pressure that falls when standing, so-called orthostatic hypertension, dizziness, anemia, among others. Uh, multiple medications can cause or can increase the risk of falls, particularly psychotropic drugs, uh, and these are among the most modifiable risk factors for falls. When we evaluate someone who has fallen previously, uh, it's important to uh, evaluate their vision, their hearing, their muscle strength, uh, evaluate their sensation on their feet, so-called neuropathy, as well as look for foot deformities. Uh, many strategies towards prevention, um, modify their medications and modify the environment, consider assisted devices such as a cane or a walker, and um, I encourage my patients to use hip protectors, even though they don't reduce the risk of fall, they can reduce the risk of a fracture in the setting of a fall. Okay, time for the quiz. Let's see how much you learned. Question number one, what percentage of dialysis patients fall each year? That's right, 25%. So one in four of our patients will fall uh, in the next year, which is why this is a very important issue for us to address. Question number two, what percentage of residents of long-term care facilities or nursing homes fall every year? And again, this is an important issue because uh, so many of our dialysis patients live in nursing homes. right so 50 percent so if you're a resident of a nursing facility who doesn't have kidney failure your risk of falling is 50 percent if you're a resident of a nursing failure who's also on dialysis your risk of falling uh, may exceed 50 percent question number three name three common risk factors for falls That's right. Uh, many, many uh, answers to this question. A prior history of a fall, muscle weakness, older age, female sex, cognitive impairment, balance problems, uh, blood pressure that falls when standing or so-called orthostatic hypotension, dizziness, um, medication use, among others. Question number four, does alcohol use increase the risk of falls? And the answer is yes. So if a patient drinks more than two drinks per day, they have a higher risk of falling. Final question, name three ways to prevent falls. That's right, uh, exercise, that's the number one intervention. Consistently shown in multiple studies to reduce the risk of falling, medication adjustment, addressing sensory problems such as uh, neuropathy or vision impairment, uh, and the use of assistive devices such as canes or walkers. This concludes the November 2024 in-service for the Northwest Kidney Center. Thank you so much for your attention. Hope you all have a blessed and wonderful Thanksgiving. A thank you for everything you do for our patients and for the organization. This is Andy Brokenbro signing out until next month. Take care.